Truth Bible Perspective, welcome to another episode. The purpose of this lesson is to show the importance of reincarnation in the Bible. I'd like to say all glory and honor is due to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai for giving us this knowledge and this truth. When you look at the word reincarnation, re means back, incarnate means flesh. Back in the flesh. What goes back in the flesh? The spirit. Alright, because what happens is when you die, your spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father and is sent back in the flesh into another body. That's the body that your parents create during sex. All right, they create the house because the word body comes from the Latin bodig, which means house. They create a house for your spirit, you know, your spirit, what your spirit is going to live in on the planet Earth. All right, because we're just spirits and bodies. So, reincarnation is not only uh, uh, probable, it's a fact. All right, all right, it's a fact. And, you know, the reason why people can't understand it because you got people that don't believe it and then you got people that believe or oh, when you die you come back as a horse or a fly or some crazy madness is because it's a mystery that's only given to the Lord's servants the prophets you know the proper true understanding of reincarnation um, let's go to the book of Amos Amos 3 and 7 it says surely the Lord power will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And reincarnation, alright, reincarnation is a secret, alright, it's a mystery. Alright, let's go to the next scripture, Colossians 1, and, uh, let's see, 1 and, 1 and, start at 26. Uh, Colossians 1 and 26, even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. Another word for saint is the Israelites. All right, the saints are the Israelites, pursuant to Psalms 147. Uh, 147. Um, I'm sorry, 148, 13 and 14. Psalms 148, 13 and 14. The saints are the Israelites. So the mystery was only given to the Israelites, and among the Israelites the elect which are the prophets of the Heavenly Father now re reincarnation is a mystery alright that's why a lot of people can't get the proper understanding of uh, reincarnation well this is the basis of my lesson alright so now let's get into it Genesis uh, the 49th chapter and we're gonna read the first verse which says this and Jacob called unto his sons and said gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Now this statement was made by Jacob around what? Maybe 2,000, maybe 2,500 years ago. So how is Jacob able to tell his sons what's going to happen to them in the last days if reincarnation is not possible? You know, right there it's letting you know that his sons will be around in the last days. We're in the last days right now. That term, last days, implies the last days of the so-called white man's empire the so-called white man's rulership that's what the term last days mean and Jacob is telling his sons what's gonna happen to them in those last days so what does that prove that proves reincarnation right there alright it proves that Jacob also knew about reincarnation for him to make that statement if you go down to the tenth verse, it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. The scepter is dealing with rulership, all right? And the rulership is going to come out of the, the tribe of Judah, because Judah is going to be the head tribe. And then it says, Nor a lawgiver from between his feet, the his being Yahweh Shai until shallow come that's another name for Yahweh Shai, shallow which means uh, peaceful and unto him Yahweh Shai, shall be the gathering of the of the people be now among that gathering of the people shall be Jacob and his sons proven once again what reincarnation because in the last days Jacob is telling his sons what's going to happen in the last days Yahweh Shai is slated to come in the last days 
As a matter of fact, when he comes, that's going to be the last day <laughs> of the so-called white man's rulership. <laughs> and then the last days. And who's going to be around? Jacob and his sons. How is that possible? Through reincarnation. The same spirits that were back there in Jacob and his sons, those same spirits are back now. Alright? Now, let's go to the next one. Uh, Exodus 24 and 5. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, I the Lord, thy power, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now why is that mentioned there, the third and fourth generation? Because that's around the time that you come back through your fathers. You come back through the third and fourth generation. In other words, that's how reincarnation works. You come back through your father's line. Alright? And you usually come back around the third and fourth generation. Meaning the father has a son, the son has a son, the son has a son, and the son has a son. That's usually the third and fourth generation. Now the women come back through their fathers. Now let's say the father doesn't have a son. Then someone, some male in that family line will have children, have a son. Or, uh, in, in this case, the son coming back through that family line or the daughter coming back through that family line. But you come back through your fathers because the father carries the seed. And what does the Lord say? He said he will visit the iniquity around the third and fourth generation. See, that's how uh, reincarnation works among the family line. Alright? So again, the scripture proves what? Reincarnation. Now, let's go to the next one. Ezekiel. Well, the reason why I'm going to read Ezekiel is to show that, um, you know, the father pays for his sins and the son pays for the for his sins. Case in point, you know, you had Abraham. Now Abraham's father Terah or Terah was um, an idol worshiper. So you better believe he paid for his sins. Abraham, in other words, Abraham didn't pay for the sins of his father Terah. Which is proven in this scripture here. Ezekiel um, 18 and 20. It says, The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So that's, that's clear. So when you go back to Exodus, the Lord said he'll visit the iniquity upon the children of the third and fourth generation. Visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. Why? Because those same fathers, they come back through the third and fourth generation of their fathers. In other words, the Lord is not going to punish the father for what the son have done, just and the son. The Lord is not going to punish the son for what the father have done. And we read that in the book of Ezekiel, so you get a better understanding of Exodus 20 and 5. All right, now let's go to Job. Job 14 and 4 which says this I'm sorry Job 14 and 14 it says if a man die shall he live again all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come so essentially what is Job saying Job is saying that his change is going to come when he comes into another body okay because when you die that's the end of that body but that's not the end of your spirit your spirit comes back in another body that's why he said I will wait until my change come. What is that change? Him getting another body. Right? Uh, Job 14 and 4. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Heavenly Father who gave it. That's why Job said, I'll wait till my change come. Because that spirit, after you die, that spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father and then the Heavenly Father sends that spirit back into a new body 
that's where you get that change all right let's uh go to um matter of fact um if we go to the book of job all right job um book of job job 17 I want to show you something in Job Job 17 and 13 now remember back in Job here I'll read it again it says if a man die shall he live again all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come now Job the spirit of Job actually is waiting where in the in the in the heavens with the heavenly Father, because we read in Ecclesiastes the spirit goes back to the heavenly Father. So now I'm going to show you something in Job 17. If I wait.